Okay, we're gonna go ahead and hop into this replay analysis for the Blood Seeker here. Um, so first off, I'm not sure what position you are. I'm kind of assuming that you're a position three Blood Seeker, uh, given the farm that you have, the items that you bought, uh, and the heroes on your team. So you picked into Nick's Assassin Lich. So. Nyx is a little bit of a risky pick. Um, your Blood Rite does quite a bit of damage, and Nyx has a really, really easy time with reflecting that, so there can be some some issues there for you, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. It doesn't really block the pick, and if you feel like you enjoy the hero or you think it's good, then there's no reason not to pick it just because somebody has to tank damage or tank a silence in order to do some damage to you. But just be aware of that going into the game that you don't want to use blood right too liberally around Nyx because uh, it ends up being really really good setup and I would be surprised if you don't die at least once this game to it okay itemization for offlane is um, subpar uh, I like the stats that you have with this iron branch the circlet is a little bit uh, too greedy for an offlane in my opinion um, I think you would be Probably better off if you want to get kind of like a damage item, get a Wraith, uh, the Slipper of Agility. It gives you a little bit more damage. Uh, but even just having an additional set of Tangos and maybe another stick is probably also a pretty decent alternative as well. Okay, let's look at this this build right here, because this is going to set the pace for the whole game. So, when these creeps are... When you pull aggro like this, and the Wraith King does the same... And this is good that you're pulling aggro, that's, that, that's good. You know uh, one thing, right? You know this Wraith King wants to see us. Now, the Wraith King and the Lich here mess up. Um, I don't know what rank they are, but they're either not thinking or they're not very high rank. Um, he's a Divine 5 on Wraith King, and Lich is Archon. So, the Wraith King is going for a play that he shouldn't have to make if he has a better support, or if he's communicating with him, which is he needs to run towards his range creep, right? So he knows that you're going to Blood Rite, because you want to you wanna make sure that you get this last hit and zone them away from any potential denies. Uh, and this Wraith King is going to try to dodge the damage if he can, and if possible, also get the range creep CS himself. So, in a better world... Um, the Lich would take the CS from the Wraith King here. Now, he's playing really greedy because he knows he can get away with playing greedy versus you guys because you're not going to punish him or you'll make mistakes. And you do make a mistake, and the mistake is you put your range creep at the edge of your Blood Rite when all you have to do is you want to put the Blood Rite in the position that hinders the enemy the most while still accomplishing whatever goal you have for it. So, for example, like if you're trying to synergize or synchronize the damage of Blood Rite plus your auto attack to make sure you guarantee this range creep, which you should be. I want to make that very clear. This is the correct idea. Um, then you want to take an extra second and think about where you can put this blood right in order to have the most impact against the Lich and the Wraith King. Um, and I think it's fairly obvious that it's way too far forward and to the right. You don't. You, all you need to do is clip this range creep with the AoE. Um, and instead, Wraith King walks out of the damage doesn't get hit, and misses the CS, but it doesn't get denied. Um, and you end up taking a lot of harass here. So you tank three nukes, and that's fine. Like, this is, that's why you have a south. Um, however, I will mention that if you have a better blood right there, you only take one nuke because then the Lich and the Wraith King are both silenced and you end up getting like a double nuke. This is a much better, much better blood right. It even could have been to the right quite a bit as well to zone this Lich off of you. Here, let's see what item you get on the courier. Hopefully it's regen. If not, you're going to have a seriously hard lane. 
Lich is someone you want to get a stick versus early. Um, and you do. And you get some tangos, which is good. That's an awful blood right. Yeah, so the most the biggest issue I've had so far in the first two minutes here, like every single thing you've done so far is correct, except for your blood rights. Like at best they've been okay. So, like you have the correct idea with them, but you're placing them wrong. And that's like such a simple thing to fix that it really is just a shame. Like here again, like <laughs> like you're trying to get this deny as well. You want both, so just put it in between. Even if even if the Wraith King doesn't take the damage, it makes him miss CS, and you get CS with it. Oops. So, yeah. your Rubik has been both the Lich and the Rubik have been about as useless as they could possibly be. Um, like I would say, both of them are equally useless so far neither of them have pulled neither of them have really like succeeded in zoning the other hero um and i haven't really seen like i haven't seen this rubik by region for you and i haven't seen the lich by region for his wraith king so i would consider this like a difficult lane from both core perspectives here like both you and the wraith king have a hard time um i think this lane actually favors you you have better sustain and better spells for laning Plus, you got a stick early, and the Wraith King did not, which I think is a mistake. But, like, this Rubik is literally just a walking leech, and so is the Lich. Like, there you go. It takes four minutes for Lich to do something. Here, like, Rubik should be pulling. And if he doesn't pull, you should pull. Like, even if you miss a CS or something, like, go and pull the creeps there, because the net gain is much higher. And you know that Lich pulled, so you're going to get double waved anyway. Okay, let's see what you do with this. You should pull all the way to your tower and then hold the creeps. Yeah, flawless. Perfect. Yeah, and they're owning. Like, you have to remember that you're, you're playing versus a Divine Five. Like, the fact that you're, what, Legend 3? Like, that shows a lot of promise. My suspicion is that Wraith King is not a core player. Um, and if he is, he's certainly not a Wraith King player, and he's playing with his brain off because he's just playing so badly. But, best case scenario, you get a completely free lane. So, what you do with this free lane is really important. So, the ideal situation is that you want this Wraith King to get as little as possible and be as punished as possible for what you're doing um, while you're getting as much as possible. So the way that you can do this is by shoving the lane under tower and then if the Wraith King comes, you pressure him. So like here, you're being very cautious to get the CS, but it's like it would be fine for you to just like hit that range creep a bunch, use your spells and push with the siege creep, which for the most part you do, but you could have done it a little bit earlier. you die here it is really bad and it's really good nice even your camera here is really well If I didn't know better, I would say you were Smurf. Literally, the only thing you've done wrong is your W. The entire lane face, which is, like, very rare. Even your itemization was basically perfect. The circlet was, like, the only greed that you went, and you ordered regen so fast it ended up being fine.
So why are you letting this Wraith King hit these creeps? Like, what's he going to do? Trade versus someone that has more farm than him? Plus 12 creeps? Especially with the zoning power of Vale. Okay, so yeah, so the past two minutes, like everything up to eight minutes, I would say you played basically perfect other than your W like we talked about. And then the past about three minutes, you've kind of let up on the pressure quite a bit. Um, it's fine to want to farm when you don't have rupture on cooldown. But when you have rupture, you should be pressuring this Wraith King or someone else. Um, another mistake you're making, unless you're correcting it right now, is clarities. So, on clarities, the general rule is if you can farm with mana, then you should have a clarity going at all times, except in fights. Like here, you should have swapped in a clarity already. Does it tingle? And it's going to take you a long time. And this could cost you quite a bit, right? Because right now you have mana for a rupture and two blood rites in a fight. And you might need more mana than that. So you do bring your clarity in, but it's just better to be full mana at all times. You have rupture up. Your team should make a play because you guys are pretty strong. Um, your Drow has had a really rough game and you want to be shoving waves as deep as possible. Like even there, it, it's better if the Drow TP's top here and you go bottom. Like basically the Drow is playing pause three and you're playing pause one. Which I think, in the end, because you're not itemizing like a position one, is going to hurt you. So if you're going to play, if you're going to play like a greedy pause one, then you need to get greedy pause one items. Because even already, like this wraith king is just becoming very manly. So you got your halberd. It seems like you're looking for a fight. That's good. You hit a little power spike. <laughs> Camera movement is really good here. It really does feel like you're playing below your rank, to be honest. Like, I have so little to critique here. Like, really, the only thing that you're... The only thing that you're not doing is... Um... Forcing the enemy to run around the map to deal with you. So, you want to be, as the offlaner, you want, excuse me, you want the enemy team to feel like they have to dedicate heroes to wherever you are. So, you're mostly going to accomplish that by split pushing. If you go watch, um, like, 
BSJ released a video of him playing Mars versus like Archons, um, and for BSJ, the difference between Archon and Legend is non-existent. So, whatever he's able to do versus Archons, you should be able to do versus Legends, because um, in his, like I said, it's just really not a big difference in the grand scheme of things. So. He is always shoving lanes, and every time he has this ult, he's looking for a kill. Um, and that's kind of like something that you should be doing that you're not. So you're shoving lanes some, not as much as you could be, not as much as you should be. Like, I would actually be fine as if you had a death or two, but you had shoved lanes and made people TP after you um, more. So, because you're trying to get more of your net worth onto your drow, because your drow is going to build carry items, and you're going to build pause through items, like I mentioned earlier. So you're not going to carry the game, no matter how much farm you have, just because of your itemization. Um, but your draw will. So if you're shoving these lanes and making people TP after you, even if you get a little bit of extra farm, or a little bit less farm, sorry, your draw will get so much extra farm for that. Uh, the other thing it will do is it will decrease the net worth of the enemy heroes, and that delta between the draw and the enemy team is really what's going to inevitably win you the game. Um, it's because draw will be stronger relative to them. Um, even if, like, even if the net worth on both teams is lower, it will still favor you guys. So, um, shoving lanes, uh, focusing towers, and then basically every time you have ult, you want to go kill a key target. Um, in this game, you don't really have a great rupture target. They don't have, like, a traditional hero that you counter, like Slark or Windranger or um, Pangolier or Spirit. But they do have some of these kind of annoying heroes like Silencer that definitely feels like he wants to kite you. Isn't really all that strong right now because, uh, well, he has this Amidas and Brown Boots. And even Bounty Hunter to some extent. This is a position three Bounty Hunter, I'm assuming. Um, like, to some extent, both Bounty and Silencer suffered a rupture, just not as much as like a traditional counter. And so you should be looking to rupture those guys pretty consistently. Wraith King is going to turn armlet on and man fight you. So you need a few heroes to deal with him. You need probably everyone but the Drow. Uh, and he has to be out of position, which is just not so likely this game because he's playing pretty... Uh, his positioning is good. So that kind of, like, space is going to be good for your team. And will net you victories even if it doesn't make your game look as clean. Okay, so you wisely run. This is good. Even though silence are TPs, something I... Uh, when my brother started spamming Bloodseeker a little while ago, I told him uh, he was... I don't know, he was like Herald or something, but he's Archon now. Um, I, I told him, I'm like, even if people just TP out of Rupture, like, you're still sending them to base. Like, you're still sending a message. And that's fine. Like, if every time... If you notice that every single time you press Ult on this mid-silencer, or whatever the hell he is, this core silencer, and he goes to base, like, victory. Obviously, you would rather get a kill, and, like, the golden kill is he TPs and you kill him anyway. Um... Here you're going for the Ags. I think that's a mistake. I think you're going to want to Yules. So being able to cancel the TP of Silencer, whoever you rupture, is good. Also having the Yules to dispel off the Silence from Silencer or the um, like track or just being able to dodge a Lich Ult or something, plus the inevitable setup that it gives you with Bloodrite. Veiling someone, Yulesing them, and then putting W on the ground and casting Q. It's like five or 600 damage or something crazy. A little bit unfortunate. It feels like your team doesn't want to play around you at all. And you'll notice that the smallest little bit of advantage, this Wraith King turns into objectives. 
Or at least tries to. Here's me in the Roche. Okay, so you did something that's going to trigger your teammates. So, you just took Roshan, you have an advantage, and you ran top to farm. And look at where your team is. Like, Rubik also did the same thing, he went bottom to farm. It's like, even if this tower falls to this creep wave, do you really care? <laughs> right? And if you're not going to go in, you need to make sure your teammates understand. Like, this play is fine, as long as your teammates are very, very aware that this is not a pushing Aegis or an objective Aegis. This is like, we're chilling. Like, we're just gonna chill, and Drow's gonna get farm, and this Aegis is gonna buy her time that if she gets jumped, that we can get there and save her. Like, this was an enormous wave. I understand the temptation to go here. But if somebody's gonna TP back for it, the best hero to TP is Drow. And if she can't TP for some other reason, then it needs to be made very aware. And I have no clue what the communication was in this sense. Uh, but my guess is the fact that I think Drow had TP. Like, it's... Like, Drow wants to push. And you make a different call. But if this call is going to be made for somebody to de-push this wave, it's not your job. It's Drow's. Like, that's the safest form on the map, and that's the best form on the map. Right there. Because everyone else is somewhere else. So like, even if you have to yell at your drow to TP, then that's fine. I play a lot of anti-mage, and I have teammates tell me TP bottom to farm, TP top to farm, or whatever, right? Because they recognize that there's something that I didn't notice, so there's farm there. Or they're telling me, hey, there's a bunch of farm here, like, and I'm not going to take it, I want you to have it. Um, and that's, like, something that should happen. And your drow is not going to be like, oh man, you're such an idiot, why the heck did you tell me to go farm? It's like, if she doesn't want to, then you go for it. But... But I can't imagine she doesn't want the gold. She should have some clarity slide out to you. You basically, if you can, like, if you can, you want to be pressing blood right off cooldown the entire game and have the mana to sustain it. Yule's helps with that as well. Um, you don't get clarities, it's kind of sad. And you have way less mana than you think. Like, you ha barely have enough to press all your spells once, and then you have to stick, and I don't think you can... You can't even get your halberd off if you press all your spells. So you're effectively, like, down an entire item because of your mana pool. <laughs> Positioning is good, though. I would have probably dusted and ruptured him there, and maybe draw can silence or something. Again, same thing. Like somebody has to defend top. It's best for draw. And you're still not getting mana. But see, you're playing away from your team. Like draw is the one who should play away from their team, not you. Good. We can use the secret shop. I would probably try to stay in XP range when I make plays like this. So even if you don't get every last hit, at least get the XP. And that clarity needs to be popped, man.
Your drive is caught up. That's good. This should be high ground. That's a pretty good play. Like that's that's a good way to leave your team right there. Like they're not gonna need you instantly. You can run back, join the fight, but you cut that wave that uh, bounty's trying to shove into your tower. Like that's a really good example of when to do that play. You'll notice. Just a comment here, if you ever play carry, you'll notice the Wraith King didn't defend. He didn't even consider it. Like, he just took a tower and he farmed. That's because three of his teammates are dead, so him sitting in base watching you guys push is not as effective as just waiting for his teammates to respawn and hoping that he gets to feed off some people. Oh my gosh, he actually lived. I think hindsight's always twenty twenty. I think you guys were pretty greedy trying to have a 5v5 fight on high ground without great vision. Um, a lot of games get thrown like that in every bracket, even the pro bracket. So it's always good to just look at this and be like, okay, that was a bad idea. Like, we knew they had global. We knew they had uh, heroes respawning. Like, Wraith King can TP it, and he's really strong. You were only able to make that play mid. Like, the reason you got these mid racks is not because you guys are stronger than them, but because you outplayed them. And now you outplayed yourselves because you thought, hey, we got these racks because we're really strong. We're really cool, right? Nope. It's just because somebody got picked off, and that turned into two more pickoffs, and then you're going to win a 5v2. So think about what makes you strong. Um, and what made you strong in the sense where you were able to get in the mid racks was because of a numbers advantage. Holy shit. One of you should fly your courier into Roche to scout it out. Because it is going to be up soon. There you go. Spawn right away. It's always nice when I say things like that and it just works out perfectly. Ooh. Makes me look really good. Cutting this wave is fine. Again, why are you guys strong? Why are you able to push? Numbers advantage. No other reason. And that was the exact same mistake that this Divine 5 player made, just to iterate my point if it happens to everyone, when they pushed here. Like, they were not strong in this fight. Because they forgot what made them strong. What made them strong was they had global, all their spells, high ground advantage, and vision. They did not have that advantage on this tier 2. So they lost the fight because they weren't stronger. Hopefully you guys sprint to Roche and bring vision with you. You need those clarities, man. And you forgot why you're strong. You'll probably lose three heroes for this and Roche. Okay. Two heroes of BKB and Roche. Oh my gosh. Whatever, they don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, that's definitely a tip. That's definitely a tip. Oh my gosh, that's a double tip. The cheese isn't worth it. Send the courier. Ugh, the wind threw harder than the drow. So it's good that you TP here. You're the hero that needs to TP the Fen Towers. So you have the best mechanic for it. And that Drow is wild. What? You probably lose the game because of this. Why did she force Staff down? What? Okay. Let's look at what you did, though. Because we're not here to talk about Drow. So your job in fights is to get your spells off, not to go in. Like, you're not building right-click items, so you never need to go in. Um, you have such insane cast range on Rupture, and you're not utilizing it at all. Like, 1,275 range, and then the cast range on this Blood Rite is also incredibly high. So, like, going into a fight is always a mistake for you. You are playing the back of the fight, you're pressing Halberd, Veil, and you're spamming spells off cooldown. Even even hitting this guy here is a mistake. Like if he's a little bit stronger, he just turns. So and you never should have been even close. Like when Jaw four staff is down, you don't need to follow her. Like just because she threw the game, now the, now you have no way of defending. Like when Ninja was about to spawn, the, the Drow is crazy, and you like had to save your buddy syndrome. But you can stall this push for a long ass time if you're still alive. Like they can't they can't take this tower if you just don't go to save drown. And yeah, people just keep leaving because they forget why they're strong. It's like they wouldn't have taken the racks unless they left base. Sad. I mean, obviously make space for your BKB before it gets delivered, but that's uh that's a mistake that I would make too. Timeless relic. Ooh, that is that is definitely your item. 25% longer duration on Rupture? That's insane. It's like a 7.5 second silence and a 15 second Rupture. Good gracious. So that fight ends up being okay. Again, you guys are like, you don't have to push there. Like, you can just chill, you can try to get a pick off, you can get wards, you can wait for Roche. Do you catch it right away? There's no way. You're out of mana, man. You're forgetting, again, it's like you don't do auto attack damage. That's not your job. And if it is your job, then you have the wrong items. You're not even a front miner, like, you're a spellcaster. Oops. Oh, hell yes.
all of them. Goodness, the panic. You buying back is fine, but like... Okay, so even they even make a mistake here where they stun you. as And you should expect this, right? Like, you should understand that he's, Nyx is going to press it. like, And then Wraith King should have run at you and just killed you. But instead, you get close to a Wraith King with Abyssal. Like, if you just start pressing your spells from a mile away, it's like, again, you're going to lose this Rax. You're okay with this. You're just trying to lower the amount of damage as possible and just stall so your Drow doesn't have to buy back. Like, that's the goal here. And they go in! This isn't real! Just relax, like they're backing. Just because they're backing doesn't mean they're scared. Oh my gosh, the throws. Thank gosh, Wind Ranger is a balanced hero. She gets a rapier for free. Holy crap. The hell out. Alright, so what you're doing here, what I've been watching the past like four minutes, is good. Like you're just pushing waves, you're trying to dodge. There's not really much you can do at this point. Like your Wind Ranger and Drow are just like, especially your Drow. Your Drow is just committed to like feeding the game away. So I would say you played exceptionally well for your rank, like very very well, with a couple of minor exceptions in some key points. Um, and then like to be honest, like your Drow just kind of choked. <laughs> to be so. I think it's important not to blame your team for why you're in the game, uh, or like why you're in this rank, but you also need to be able to like say, okay, this is how I messed up and this is how my team messed up. So you're actually in a party with this Drow. So if he wants, he's can more than welcome to watch. I wasn't as nice towards him as I probably would have been if it was directed to him, but um, like there's things here that he can learn from as well if he's interested. Anyway, hope this helps. I'll talk to you later.